So something crazy happened. I got to interview Sarah A. Parker, the author of When the Moon Hatched. Flip the camera, I want you guys to see the cover in all its glory. And not only did me and our live audience have an amazing time, but Sarah gave us the world's first sneak peek into book two of her Moonfall series. And let me tell you, it was juicy. So thank you to everybody who watched it live and to everybody else. Enjoy the interview. Welcome, Sarah. Can I call you Thank Sarah? You. Is that okay? Yes, of course you can. Okay. Well, yes, it's lovely. nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you too. Um, I love all your books behind you, by the way. Thank you. Got, uh, I got your book also over there. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I made a set because I, I do a lot of live streams and so on to make it all look really good. I want to be honest with you. I have never done an author interview before. So oh. my goal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Probably. No, you're good. My goal here is I have my questions, you know, and, and, and I just want to have a good chat. You wrote a great yes. book. I want to talk about it. That's my goal here, That's right? right? That's the goal today. So a lot of people are coming in here from our book club because yeah. we read it for August. And but there are also people here who are just curious about the book in general. So give me a little like introduction to you in this book. Like what are we what are we talking about today? Yeah. So, um, OK, so for those who haven't read the book, I guess uh, when the moon hatched, it follows she's an assassin for a rebellion group she uh has no recollection of her past and she um she is mourning the death of somebody who she has lost and through that is on sort of an, a revenge arc so to speak and um through that journey uh she meets somebody who seems to know a lot more about her than uh then uh, meets the eye. So then there is, we also follow Khan, he's a dragon riding king, and he, um, he, <laughs> he, he is mourning the loss of his long lost love. And through that, he is uh, hunting down the scattered uh, pieces of a, I guess let's just call it relic of their love without going to spoilers. Yes. And through that journey, he comes across Rave and the story, uh, I guess, blossoms from there. So yeah, awesome. that just gives a brief run around of the people. Uh, the world itself, it's it's um, it doesn't spin, so it's half sunlight and it's half, half you know river shadows. So there's sort of three distinct territories, and in these different territories, there's different breeds of dragons. And when these dragons die, they soar up into the sky, curl up into balls, and solidify, becoming uh, moons or tombstones. It's awesome. It in feels so unique. It's Thank like <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we'll we'll get into that more. I think I I will at some point here start talking spoilers but not for a little bit i don't think so i think people are still good for now i have a question big question i think everybody's wondering this question yes what's your favorite color oh <laughs> <laughs> i love that question uh, so i've actually got two um i like Ooh, okay. this i've got an example right here Perfect. i like this color it's sort of like that rusty actually for those who've read the book it's kind of like the color of the of the earth the ground and the burn um i love that sort of rusty yeah. color and then i also like sage green sage green all right earthy colors i'm noticing yes. i i love earthy colors too just because with my skin tone for like outfits and stuff earthy stuff looks way better than other colors so i'm a big fan I of that my wardrobe is just autumn. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's about to... Well, I wear autumn all year round. <laughs> it's not about to be autumn for you. It is for me, but because hemispheres, right? How does that... Yeah, so we're coming into spring, first day of spring today, okay. but the past ugh, week, it's been like 35 degrees Celsius. So I don't know what that Ooh, is in Fahrenheit, but it has been hot. hot. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's like summer hot. So we're oh, all boy. a bit shell-shocked. <laughs> yeah, we, we're at similar temperatures here, actually. I was recently in Canada, so the Celsius... Fahrenheit's kind of working in my brain, but it's been very hot here too. And we have wildfires here. So it's like, I oh, want no. this to be over so that we oh. can just go into not worrying about that. You know, you are, sorry, my cat's walking around. No, you're fine. I've got my puppy down there and he's like, I've given him something to chew on, but uh -huh. if you hear him running around, throwing things around, that that's him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You're a writer yes. and I'm a, presumably a reader as well. So this, this is an unfair, I have two questions and these are unfair questions to ask readers like i don't know what i would answer them but i'm gonna ask them anyways because they're fun questions who's your favorite author oh that's hard oh yeah. golly okay um look there's there's been one particular series that really oh gosh there's two okay oh can i pick two yes you can put <laughs> you can put three if you want go for it <laughs> okay so firstly um i guess the the author who has inspired me the most and like and i think his writing is just impeccable i i, I just love the lasting image that he's he's left with me um mm -hmm. after reading his stories is patrick rothfuss i just okay. think he's a beautiful beautiful writer i i i, I love 
the way he explains things. Um, there's also Karen Marie Moaning. So she's written her Fever series. Um, in particular is, I haven't actually read anything else from her, but um, I've only, I'm now almost finished her Fever series. The last book came out recently mm-hmm. and I've been, I'm halfway through it, but I had to shelve it while I'm working on book two. Um, but just, I think the way that she kind of moves through a story, she's, she's got such a sort of cloppy pace, but she also somehow manages to paint like such impeccable pictures in your mind mm-hmm. and her character development you know these characters go from you know, one extreme to the other and you know you're there you they feel so real yeah and <sighs> i've just and her main male love interest as well in that story well actually there's two of them but just <laughs> fantastic if you haven't read them and you like dark romance go for gold mm-hmm. <laughs> Get so there. that would then answer the other question was your favorite like book or series would it be similar like those authors I, if i if there's one series that i wish i could read again for mm-hmm. the first time it would be um it would be the fever series yeah okay awesome so you were just saying the, the, the other author i'm sorry i don't remember her name what, what was her like name karen marine morning karen marine morning yeah so, yes, that's probably my accent. sorry <laughs> all marine good morning. all good all good so uh <laughs> you were reading the most recent one recently so what other books have you been reading lately last few months i so i recently i think about four months ago finished manacled um but apart from that and being halfway through that last book in that series i have not been reading since i started working on moonfall 2. Um, makes sense i I (laughs) can't because otherwise it's just like i have to completely immerse myself Mm -hmm. and you know if i'm getting other stories in my head and stuff like i'm i'm, I'm already dumping like regular important information from my head to <laughs> like make way for yeah. the story so if i try to pack anything else in there then i just i lose track of things so. no I, I i get that i uh, i've written in my life obviously i'm not a full-blown author but i've written and i've noticed sometimes i'll like write something and think wow this is so awesome and i'll show it to my friend and they'll be like this is from like this book and i'm like it is <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like a book I read like three years ago, just completely forgot about. But uh, so yeah, I get that. So d- throughout the month, there was one thing that was brought to my attention that was uh, very cool. So on Spotify, uh, there's a playlist for When the Moon Hatched. I'm assuming you made that. That's you? I did. Okay, right. fantastic. So I wanted to ask you, favorite musicians, songs? Like, what, what do you listen to? I, I listen to a bit of everything, but I do like a bit of sort of, uh, you know, um, I... <laughs> like light metal <laughs> I also okay. love instrumental <laughs> um I love instrumental um I violin piano um mm-hmm. I, I I honestly like you would have noticed from that playlist there's a bit of everything in there yeah um, my favorite artist like ever ever um breaking Benjamin sorry all right cool yeah. cool there's a phrase that I'm sure you've heard, to not judge a book by its cover. I don't believe in that phrase personally because I love covers. I'm a big cover person. And one of the reasons I was so interested in your book was because the the cover's awesome. It's like, it's a really yeah. beautiful cover. And side note, the, the chapter illustrations at the beginning of the chapters, like oh, when you see that stuff in a book, it, it just, it, you can feel the passion. You can see the passion in a book when, when it has all of that. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's more money involved. And so there's reasons that some people don't do it, but like, it is just... It's a piece of art, you know, when you pick up that book and you're and you're going through the pages and you're like, ah, this is this is beautiful. After seeing that cover, the next yeah. thing that hooked me, and this 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 is like the biggest question I'm gonna ask you for me. Uh, everybody else super curious about book two. I'm curious about, about book two also, but this is very important to me. That first chapter, that prologue, with all with the creation myth, that was awesome. <laughs> that was like that was so great to read. It, you you wrote it amazingly, and it's just. I love mythology, right? So I have to know, are you ever going to do like a compilation or bonus chapters or anything more myths in this world? Quite possibly, yes. Okay, Uh, I'll take it quite possibly. (laughs) I'll take that. There is, so, okay. The interesting things of this story is I, the world itself came to me like over three years ago now, it'd be about four years ago since I, you know, it was three years ago since I started writing it so about four years ago now um but i spent that entire time in the world building the building the mythology you know literally just building it from the ground up. i did not i didn't rush into the story like i mm-hmm. let the world completely flourish in my head first let let all the everything you know build up and then before i started writing 
you know that first chapter i spent a month getting everything out of my head okay. into like a massive document and like it's thousands and thousands of word, words long it's like 50 it's awesome something. yeah and that's just all full of history myth everything you know and I've, obviously i haven't used it all but it's but i plucked from that to write that prologue and it was the first thing i wrote um and it barely changed from that f- very first draft that i wrote to what was published um awesome. because it was you know that was just awesome. that was my I, and i needed to get everything out of here yeah and in a reader's mind without bogging them down too much by planting it through the story so mm-hmm. i wanted to at least give them the feel and the sense of the shape of the world and everything that's going on so there's so much more to tell there um lots of lots of fun exciting opportunity to just cool. give more so um but yeah, so, oh, and I wanted to just touch on one more thing as well, what you mentioned about the cover and the internal art. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually didn't tell anyone I was writing this story. I was supposed to be writing the fourth book of my other series, my Crystal Bloom series, mm-hmm. but I needed really needed the breath. And um, so I, by the time I actually announced it, it was getting that second round of edits and it was almost ready to be published. Oh, wow. But because <laughs> of that, I, I had this really cool open amount of time that I could just love on the story and to get you know, to get these cool other different things out of my head and, you know, two artists and, yeah. you know, and well, she, like, when I found Alice who, um, she did the internal header designs, you know, I just, I just feed her all these ideas. She's, she's actually working on some really cool things for me right now as well that I can't wait to share. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so really soon, hopefully, we'll be able to share some of that. But like, it was just so cool that you know I had those images there, like ready to go, well before it was published. And just because I had this wonderful time to, mm-hmm. you know, and I think as well when you're writing a story, it's not just about the story. It's about like for me, the creativity doesn't end there. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring other people into this world with me. And yeah. so I kind of, you know, like there's all those little images and stuff throughout the book. The ones like with the with the knee note and you know and the um the store sort of um, labels and stuff, you know, the, um, uh, you know what I mean? The, just all the different, the um, the thing from the earth as well, the, yeah, just yeah, all yeah. the different pieces. Um, I'm, I spent probably about a month making all those myself as well. So, um, yeah. And it just, adds so much like labels. depth, like just to have that visualization of it, right? Um, yeah. I was actually, gonna, I was gonna ask this question later, but since you brought up like writing it, I do want to ask now, when, like, what was your reaction? to when the moon hatch like taking off to the level that it did because like on goodreads it's got like eighty thousand reviews like i've i found it through tiktok i think and like what, what what was going on in your head i i think i was like look me writing this story was it was a risk right my husband had just actually retired to be able to like be the primary caregiver of, of our kids because i was working 70 plus hours a day like yeah. I, I was burning the candle at both Ends. I wasn't leaving the house for like three months straight, hitting these deadlines that I had for myself. Yeah. And it was unhealthy. And, you know, he said, look, I'm going to leave my career. I'll come home and I will look after the kids and you just do you. And, that's awesome. that's, that's, and that's, I was that's, like, that's... everyone's waiting for this book. I'm going to write something completely different. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and but I was like, Ugh. it turned uh, out. Oh, I, I'm just I'm I'm blown away there, you know, because it's it's very different to my other series, and I think I you know I just knew it was a, a huge risk that a lot of people might not want to might not take to it, you know, the way that I had, but I just I knew the story needed to be told, so when it kind of <laughs> it's actually funny because um the <laughs> I'm gonna get Terry actually now um Go for it. when I, get I wrote all the time. that. <laughs> Oh, um, my Nana was like a huge inspiration for me mm-hmm. um, and, and, and all, the, all all that I write, like in fantasy in general, because, um, yeah, she just, she's had a huge impact on my life. Yeah. And um, she kind of introduced me to like the fantasy world. Um, and <laughs> I got to that last word and I wrote that very last word. And I'm not going to say it for those that haven't read it. Um, but I had been working towards that final last word, all, mm-hmm. you know, all, all, all throughout the entire book. And um, and I went and sat in the, car- in the shower and I cried for like half an hour because something inside me, mm-hmm. it's just, I just knew that people were like, like it was like this, this feeling that it's going to be okay. And that actually this was, you know, people were going to really like the story. Yeah. And I was just crying because I, I was so heartbroken that my Nana wasn't going to be able to read the story. Yeah. And that had really been, you know, built by, built, built from, you know, I guess our relationships so yeah <laughs> <It's> beautiful <laughs> that's like that's 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 amazing it, it is so unique 
the story like it feels at least to me I, i'm not i haven't read every book on the planet obviously but like going through that book it felt so unique and it felt like something like okay people are going to grab onto this just because it's not like what's out there all the time always there's so many books that are i won't name any, any of them but just copy and paste books or similar premises or similar stuff like that it just feels so unique it was so cool and <laughs> i i, I want to continue on that path of like early on with this story so like who what were the inspirations for for khan and rave their characters oh so so i the interesting thing is so i I tried to write this story twice prior and okay. each time I got to about 35,000 words and I was like, that's not working. And I scrapped them. And then when it came to that time, I was like, oh, okay. And it was while I was working on something else anyway. So it was just kind of me t ticking away. Um, so it wasn't me giving it my full attention, um, but I could tell it wasn't getting where I needed it to get. Mm -hmm. um, but so once Josh, um, you know, came home and was looking after the kids for me, like one of the thing, main things that wasn't coming across I think right was the characters okay. like they weren't they weren't kind of grabbing me like i could see them in my head and i think the problem was that at that time in my life i was really strained you know i was i was i kind of i was struggling and whereas after josh left work and came home and helped me with the kids and it honestly felt like you know in you know the battle of the bastards where and i've said this in my end notes where john snow is up against that huge army and then yes. he's like all right then and he whips up his sword and he's, he's going yeah. <laughs> and then this army pushes like forward and just you know saves them that's how it felt for me and i think a lot of what i ended up putting into these characters was <laughs> that you know like khan i think i was writing him to hard edged and whereas when i started writing him after you know after Joshua sort of came home to help me, like there was this sort of unconditional support there and, and love and just this, you know, there was just this feeling between them suddenly and it's like everything just sort of clicked into place. And yeah. with Rave as well, it's like there was this sort of, this fierceness to her that I think wasn't there previously and this sort of more sharpness to her. And um, and so I think there's a bit of, I think it's a bit of just my atmosphere and what, you know, what was going on in my life at the time that went into that um also though i had also been watching a lot of um yellowstone okay. and <laughs> and i don't know if, if you've watched it but there's a bit of it so there's a there's a there's a duo a, you know a couple in in this in the series and i think there's a there's a dynamic between them and she's really just like balls to the wall like yeah. she's okay. she's you know, she's brutal <laughs> and she's non-apologetic and he is he's just got this unconditional love for her mm. and is just a sturdy sort of you know so i think there is definitely a bit of that in khan and rave's dynamic they are such fun characters i i i love khan khan is ah i have there's so much i could say but um a lot of people i think when they're writing uh struggle with names so like what how did the, their names come to you so i've got actually interestingly enough i've got a list of about like four or five hundred names that i just every now and again if i see something that i'm like oh that's a that's a that sounds you know or if it's, i see something and it makes me think you know like for instance our dog kimber i i don't know where i found that name but it was in there <laughs> um i named it that um but it's so i i'll you know i might have a bit of an idea for you know the names that i think are going to suit these characters but once i start writing them like that might not that might not show be the character you know i'm like yeah. oh, okay that doesn't quite fit um for, so but with khan i always knew that i wanted him to be called khan um I, I i as soon as i could see him in my head um back when i even started that very first draft and mm -hmm. scrapped and the second draft scrapped um so i kind of had plucked i don't even know where i got it from <laughs> where, I, where i when i first put it in the list but yeah. i just always through that you know and i think he wasn't fitting that name in my first two drafts um and i just but i could really i just knew he needed to be named that so i yeah. you know finally got there um he definitely fits right? it <laughs> like like it, it yeah, like i hear like, con yeah. i'm like oh i can see that yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it's like there's a richness to it mm -hmm. um rave i i don't I gotta be honest. I can't even remember. Like Fair I, <laughs> I can't. I don't. Th I don't think though. I don't think I plucked it from that list um, of names stuff collaborated. I, I, I get. I think I couldn't find anything from there that actually fit with her, and so I think I 
yeah i think i might have sat with it I've, my editor as well she's been fantastic like if i'm ever struggling with something we mm-hmm. usually go back with the boards and you know um sometimes in my first draft she'll go through and she'll be like mm, that name's not i don't like that <laughs> name i'm like okay <laughs> all right it's <laughs> <Yes>, changing it <laughs> all right, cool cool well then let's stay on the on the inspiration route you were talking about how you were supposed to be writing the the fourth book in your other series right yes so what inspired you what made you want to write this story i think so this this the world for me Mm -hmm. i i think that if i tried to again write the story earlier if i if i'd carried on with those drafts earlier i don't think i would have been ready to be right to write a world so vast you know but i think one of the reasons why i wanted i so desperately could not let go of this idea and this world is because it's so rich you know i fell into it i felt like i was sitting in a video game every Mm -hmm. night while i was laying in bed walking down these streets you know like (laughs) taming these dragons like like you know thieving an egg from one of the the hatching grounds like i felt like i was in a video game i was like i and i i just so desperately needed to build this and put it onto page but just 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 for myself you know because Mm -hmm. it it was plaguing me like i when i say plaguing me i mean like i every night like when i'm driving every time i'm writing these other books but like while i'm working but all my other time was spent in this world that i could not pull myself out of yeah and i was like i need to i need to put this down on paper i need to do it if not for anybody else for me and but i also knew that i needed to i think sharpen up my skills to do it okay. and to try and do it justice um and i think if i had done it earlier i don't think you know not to say that i'm you know i've, I've just, we're always always got learning to do and yeah. growing to do and I, I try to do that with every story that i write but i knew that i need to get to a certain point for me to be able to actually bring it to life um with my writing so um yeah i think it was it was almost like a gift to myself in that mm-hmm. way um to uh, just challenge myself and see if i could actually bring this to life in the way that yeah. i see it in my well it's so obviously like you're passionate about it and I, I imagine as you create you get more and more passionate more and more invested and very hard know, to pull out <laughs> and, then, and then like uh, you got the final book open that you see the map with the whole world and it's like oh the three segments and you're like oh my gosh like the, the wall and like it's like it's not just some fantasy map that's like this is a continent and this is one place on a continent it's like this is Yep, here's everything <laughs> you know the funny thing is so that i didn't obviously draw that map but i drew like a draft of the map mm-hmm. um before i started writing the story and oh, so awesome. i was working off that I've, got, I've actually got it in my cupboard over there somewhere but it's yeah i know then i sent that through to my map illustrator and she brought it to life mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah that makes like having a map for when you're creating makes some that's that's a that, that's just good writing advice i think because yeah. like you can point yeah, to places and be like oh they're gonna go there and that's like that far maybe <laughs> Honestly, game changer for me. Like actually sitting down, writing down my lore and mm-hmm. my backstories, my characters, everything, and then also sitting down, drawing my map, naming everything as well first before I sat down and write. Mm-hmm. Um, before I sit, sit sit down and write, I wrote that first draft for book one in six weeks, and Whoa. it's a big book. Yeah, <laughs> but that was purely from planning. Yeah. That's <laughs> like awesome. if I yeah, if I again if I tried to go forward with one of those other first drafts, it would have taken me like two years because yeah. you know, i just wasn't quite ready yet well i'm curious about this the, the the idea of the moons so i'm assuming they've been there for since the start because it's a pretty big part yeah, of the well, since, since pretty big part started, of it yep, where did that come from where did the idea of moons come from you know though the funny thing is i i i i was literally in the bath one day and i suddenly just sort of i was just looking up thinking of in this world again like mm-hmm. i you know like to be and i just saw them I just saw them and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> and awesome. it like struck me and it was almost like somebody just planted them in my head and I was like, oh, that is so cool. And I was like, I was like bewitched. <laughs> I love that because there's like so many like, like shower thoughts, right? And, and, and you took that and you just created a whole freaking book. That's like this <laughs> thick. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You acted on it. That's, that's great. Well, yeah. with, with the moons, so mm-hmm. dragons clearly yes uh what draws you to dragons like why dragons so the first fantasy book that i read was aragon that would do it (laughs) uh, (laughs) so i was i've been you know from a very young age i have been you know 
transfixed <laughs> on yeah. dragons. Um, my nana as well, she had this little um, like dragon egg with a, with a dragon hatching out of it. And okay. um, and it was passed on to me. Um, I've got a huge big pile of fairy books over, fairy and creature books over there. And just, you know, full of dragons. They all came from her. Um, I've got them now. And yeah, so, it, you know, just... They were though they actually used to sit on her um coffee coffee table and I'd mm -hmm. go over there and would bake and then I'd well everything was cooking I'd sit there and flick through you know the dragon and fairy books that it's she like had the and... best coffee table books ever yeah. like, that's yeah. so great <laughs> and uh... then I'd go and wander around on the farm and try and find you know like fairies <laughs> and in the, in the little nooks and crannies and dragons and it just it was you know yeah. for me little geckos that I'd catch in the underneath the rocks with the baby dragons and stuff yeah. so <laughs> that makes me that's uh because like dragons are such a big fantasy thing right like old stories aragorn we, we, we got um i just pronounced that horribly that was embarrassing uh the hobbit like tolkien like dragons have been oh, yeah. like for yeah. a long time part of fantasy so honestly after this i might start looking into why like where dragons came from because <laughs> i never really oh, thought about that because it's been around in stories for honestly, so long uh, i'm fully team like uh, who knows maybe maybe the maybe the dinosaurs were dragons and they all maybe. had wings and just like disintegrated they gave them somewhere <laughs> the yeah exactly <laughs> people gotta be inspired yeah, i want to believe this i think we're going to start getting into a little bit of spoiler territory so for people <laughs> watching just know that not sure how you can answer this question but what happens if hypothetically a character in the story hypothetically just an idea yes. put together all these like shards of like a fallen dragon like what would what would happen if they all like came together as one thing like what do you think are, are we talking about just a random fallen moon or slatra if we're talking about slatra then i <laughs> I can't say. Okay, okay, you know what? I'll accept the can't say. And that's the thing, <laughs> is that people, there were a lot of questions that were submitted that mm. I looked at, and I was like, I don't want to know the answer to that question, because I want to read yeah. it. <laughs> I want to read it and discover it when I'm reading it. So a couple of questions I had to like change and edit a little bit because like I don't want to I don't want to ask you to tell me like giant spoilers because one you won't because they're spoilers and two I don't want to know. I want to read. Yeah. I want to yeah. discover them. A little bit more fun. Uh, I mean, this has all been fun, but fun question. What's the story behind the the, the word spangle poop? It's very <laughs> specific. It's, it's used fairly frequently throughout. Yeah. Um, Look. Was that just like, were you looking for something or? or no. <laughs> I was I was just, just writing and I was, you know, it's quite often like, as I'm writing, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm telling myself the story as we go, right? So I... I'm just, and it just comes out, and I'm like, and I just snort it <laughs> and keep going, and then I was like, I'm gonna use that again, <laughs> and then I just, it just grew from there. So, the phrase <laughs> came before the creature. Yes, it did. I yes, love that. Absolutely. It's like a chicken and egg like, thing. Like, like... <laughs> That's awesome. I was, okay. I was like, I'm gonna give this more depth. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I love it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. This is another one of those questions that I don't, I had to change because I don't want the answer to. So yeah. people, there's a lot of theories about like possible connections between Slatra and the other. Uh, mm -hmm. What I want to know is, are you like, is one of the, cause you're working on book two. Yes. Are we seeing more of this other character? Are we going to get to learn more or are we going to have to wait? Yes. No, you're, you're no, yes, yes. You're, awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's great. <laughs> That's good. I'm excited. Yeah. There is a scene. I'm going to call it a classic scene. It's a scene that when I was reading, I made a video about it because I thought it was hysterical. But Khan is secretly meeting with the princess. Yeah. And in this scene, it comes to Khan's attention uh, via her telling him that she's in love with this rock. So <laughs> I'm curious. Crazy. And then his reaction is hysterical. It was amazing. I love that scene. But what did Kayla say? What was his pickup line? What did, what did he do to to get her to fall in love with him? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, he speaks a different language. So uh, That's, a good point. That's a good point. That's tough. <laughs> Look, maybe it was something like, I might be a rock, but I can still rock your world. <laughs> Hey, that checks the boxes. That does it. That's that's there you go. <laughs> there you go. And anything else, anything else could have been lost in translation, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, to be a little bit more serious about Kalis, yes, yes. a little bit more of a serious mo note about this, uh, who is who is depicted to be 
evil. He's made out to be the bad guy uh, to a certain extent. Like, but is he like, is he evil or is he just, would you just say he's misunderstood as, as a God? And very misunderstood. Mis very misunderstood. Yeah. I like that's that make that adds depth to it. I like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited to see. I'm assuming we'll probably also learn more about Kayla's stuff in book two. I mean, it's a big part of the story. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will very much so. Okay. <laughs> yes, a lot more in book two. <sighs> is book two gonna? Can I ask this? Is book two gonna be that thick or thicker or less thick? I think it'll be. <laughs> So I've got 22 chapters left to write. Uh, I've done 57 already. Okay. Um, I think book one was 89, but there was about 20 diary entries. So they were quite small, mm -hmm. whereas so this one here, a lot, lot of the chapters are bigger, you know, scattered with those little ones, um, which they all count as a chapter. So um, I think it probably will be about the same size, if not a little bit bigger. Okay. Hey, but we'll see. We'll that see. Sounds great. I, I've That's... got to go through and flesh. <laughs> okay. And that always grows a lot. So yeah, it's gonna it's still the funny thing is actually and here's a fun fact. Book one was originally the first half, only the first half of my mapped out book one. Whoa. So book two <laughs> is the second half of my map for the first full arc of the spray. And then oh. I that was my very early planning stage and i very quickly realized i was like this is going to be huge this is gonna be too <laughs> it's going to be big it's going to be yeah the writing's going to have to be tiny um so i was like okay so i sort of reshuffled um so yeah book two is kind of there's a lot of like there's just there's a lot of answers there's a lot of it's it's, a, it's all of the favorite part that i was i guess looking forward to writing um That's in the good. whole yes. previous plan of book one so i'm excited cool. you got your you got your your tolkien story because his his whole thing was lord of the rings being one book and they were like make three <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hang on a minute. in the question submissions uh someone asked who would win in a fight between characters i chose resand from akatar they gave a list and i chose the most popular one so who would win in a fight between resand and khan <laughs> You may be biased, are talking, but are we, are we talking like an arm wrestle or like an actual an actual battle fight on like a battlefield that's like full power, or are we talking like a no power and we're just in a battle ring going like brawn to brawn? So hmm. because if we're talking about full power, like we've got hmm. everything, they've got everything at their disposal. Hmm. I'm pretty sure like Reese can. A, a, like missed an entire army with a single thought. He did do that. Whereas, <laughs> yeah, whereas... That is something you could do. that's a good point. That's I think Khan's point. gone. Yeah, that's a good because point. Because he needs to speak words first to be able to, you yeah. know, to be able to we call upon, you know, Boulder or Ignos. Well, yeah, or... He can also, but he, yeah, no, the words, the words that slow him down. Yeah, um, and I mean, there's other things that I can't go into, but you know, mm -hmm. I think that given the information we currently have at our disposal, yeah. uh, the readers currently have at their disposal, I would say that you know, it's it, it, I think I think calm would be missed. Um, but if it's a <laughs> if it's a if it's a, if it's a uh, we're in a battle ring, we've got no, no power, we're just muscle to muscle, then I think it would be interesting. I think I do too. I I for the arm wrestle, I'm partial to Khan because I picture him yeah. as like he's uh, he's strong. Yeah. He's strong. Yeah. And, and Reese yeah. is more like, oh, I'm powerful, but you can't like necessarily yeah. tell from me physically. I'm just very cool, yeah. you know? What three book characters would you invite to a dinner party and why? Oh, so just my characters or any any character? Anyone, but you, you could include your characters if you want, but it's open to anyone. <laughs> I feel like my characters will be like, oh, she'll probably poison us. <laughs> They'll be all sick of my shit, you know? <laughs> They've heard enough of me. <laughs> um, look, I think I would take one for the entire bookstagram, uh, book talk team, and invite the uh, invite the three um, Illyrian males and finally set to uh, finally set to rest who has the biggest wingspan. Oh, that's... <laughs> That's the best answer you could have given. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great answer. Okay, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I actually got start. I'm 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 rambling. I actually got started creating bookish content because I was working on a book and I wanted to build an audience that would be interested in buying said book. Uh, and so I did that. And then you know I read books like Fourth Wing, Akatar, and I discovered that they're really good. And so I just started making videos about that instead. And the writing is on the side for now. But a lot of Keep people. Going. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to it. Now Keep that you said going. it. 
<laughs> a lot of a lot of readers and I think a lot of people on Bookstagram Book Talk, they're also writers. They enjoy writing. So I have a couple like writing specific questions for you just to yeah. give them some pointers, you know? Absolutely. So like do you have any tips when building and fleshing out worlds to make it not overwhelming? Yes. My first one would be what I did with Mo. Get down mm -hmm. the basics. Like just jam it down there like it doesn't have to be tidy it doesn't have to make sense just yeah. just get it down and you know with bullet points like so it's all tabbed down your side so you can you know easily access bits of information that you know get your everything down clearly so it's like you've got clear outline of your story you, you, yeah. you know how it works because it's very easy once you sort of get into a story to just kind of chase a rabbit and yeah. when you do that you know you you tend to pull away from the plot and you you know you can get lost down that rabbit hole i guess and then you know you you're, you're not sort of you know chasing the line that you need to chase so definitely getting that clear plan down getting everything out of your head first and then when you do start writing don't keep going over and over it get down that first draft of each chapter like just bang it down you know don't stress over the shape of each sentence and mm -hmm. and you know and your cadence and all that sort of stuff just get it down and then move on to the next chapter you know if you have a thought about things that need to change in those sentences in those in those chapters previous chapters just put a note like put a put a comment uh, you know tab a comment on there to go back to later because quite often when you get to the end of the book and you can see the whole story clearly then you go back to the start again and start going through and changing all those notes and stuff like yeah. things change you know so Get, just get the idea down then you've got something to work with i very much take writing a story like pottery building pottery mm -hmm. you get a piece of clay you lump it down on your on your wheel you know you start shaping it up and you know it might crumble down while well, you know so you gotta start again but that's okay just to shape it up again you know you'll get it to that you know just where you're happy you gotta scrape it off yeah. then you know you gotta let it dry so you gotta let it you gotta think on it and then you've got to glaze it and then you've got to fire it and hope it doesn't crack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, so just don't be too hard on yourself. Just just get down the basics without being, you know, remember as well that, that and this is something that I think we all, especially when you're, you know, first introducing somebody to a huge fantasy world, yeah. it's trying not to bog down your readers. Like, this, this, what I struggle with the most when I'm starting a story is I've always got so much in my head and I'm trying to not, you know, ramble or, like, you know, just throw too much world building at once and you know that's a fine balance and i'm always working to try and get that right yeah. and you know maybe one day i will get that just right but but it's it's you know you've got to you don't be like oh i need to just tell it need they need to know everything right now you know just pair it back and and help the reader to i guess you know remember that we first connect with a character and you know and then the world kind of blossoms around like I for me anyway I I if, if I'm reading and I connect with the character immediately then I'm suddenly very interested in what's going on around you know so you know but we need we need that tether to follow yeah um so yeah just get it down get it down bland just get it down as bland as possible you can flesh it out later that's great yeah I think that at least in my experience that like what, what brings so much of that overwhelmingness is just having it all in your head and not being able to pick through it because it's just a jumble of thoughts so yeah that's that's yeah. great advice that's good this is an interesting question that i think is everybody's like go-to writing question mm. because it's about a big make it or break it moment for a lot of people when they're writing i think so yeah. how often would you say you deal with writer's block and like do you have any points or tips to like get past that yes so for me, i don't kind of let it get to the point where i'm you know i'm stagnant for days you know if i'm dealing with it i like to pinch it like get onto it straight away um so usually what i'll do is i'll go back to a chapter that really moved me um that i've written already in the story and um or in the story before and i will read over that, ch that chapter or that that section and i will i will be back on that horse again i'll be back following i'll be oh this is why this is why i'm doing this you know because mm -hmm. it does like sometimes sometimes it doesn't matter how much you love a story like sometimes you kind of lose your way a little bit and it's like shoot you know because we're so deep in it that it's sometimes hard to see it from like you know that that outside of perspective so i go back to trying to be a reader and going and remembering you know <laughs> remembering those emotions yeah. 
So there's that, but I also, honestly, like I've trained myself so well that that I just have to turn the shower on mm-hmm. <laughs> and hearing that sound, I'm like, oh, that's what I need to do. This thing's and moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Who was the most fun character to write? Hmm. <laughs> Look, Rave, I, I could write Rave for the rest of my life. Like she's, <laughs> oh, it's just like, especially when she's just like that scene, for instance, where she's, you know, she's getting like condemned and and she's just giving it back. Mm-hmm. Um, despite the fact that she's, you know, about to be. You know, <laughs> she's great. Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> I was just living my best life then. So mm-hmm. uh, her, definitely. But I also really liked writing the other um i think that there is a certain i guess fairness and it's Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) i i really liked kind of stretching those muscles in that direction so that's fun the the, it's the badass characters the characters you're like oh you can just like like cheer them on while you're writing them there's Um, an unapologeticness to it and mm -hmm. you know i like just not having to justify things it's just there's it's freeing heck yeah awesome then i'm i'm gonna kind of go in a different direction what was the most difficult scene to write during the when the moon hatched it's probably an ode to what we were talking about before so the start mm-hmm. so i, I it's certainly it, the emotional scenes that like really hurt to write i actually don't find them hard i find them they in a way they kind of feed me mm-hmm. um I'm always emotionally blown afterwards, but um, it's I, I I really enjoy getting to those things. Um, for, it's definitely the start. It's like okay, you know, it's trying to strike that proper balance of of you know pulling the reader into this world that I've been in for so long without overwhelming them. And you know, so not not chapter one, not the prologue, but rave chapter one, yeah. two, three. Like those three, they needed the most amount of work. Um, I think I chopped them up a few times and started fresh a few times, and yeah. and you know, eventually, eventually got landed where I did. So yeah, that that's, that for me is always is a bit hard at the start of books. Yeah, because you want to make sure that like people are interested. Like you want to get people to stay because that's like that's like yeah. your this is my ad for my book. These are the first few chapters, and and yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Well, d- to flip that. Mm. what was the most fun scene to write i could say easiest but i feel like there's probably parts in the book that you're just you were just going through and it's probably hard to hone in on one easy one so like what's a fun scene uh it honestly honestly it was the scene where right oh hang on no no hang on it it (laughs) it was the scene where um where Rave's just been spat out of something's mouth. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was oh my gosh. I love writing that scene. <laughs> that that I made a video about that scene too because yeah. I I the banter and yeah. like that interaction, like I was already invested in the story, but after that interaction, I was like, oh, like I I need to see <laughs> what goes on. I need this now. <laughs> this is required. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i really cool. found my feet there i was like oh here we go <laughs> okay <laughs> so stuff starts going that's awesome yeah well to be less cheery uh you are yeah. you kind of went into crying a little bit but have so that might be your answer but if there's other scenes have you written scenes and stuff that have made you cry while you're like writing like wow this is like this is tough I, uh, I uh, yes. Yeah. So with um, Moon, I there was numerous scenes that just bit me every time. So mm-hmm. the very last scene, um, that last page, mm-hmm. um, the scene, uh, there's an essay scene where something happens. There's that one as well. Yeah. Um, there is the oh, all the diary entries. I think I just set everything outside and wrote the diary entries for a week mm-hmm. and I spent that entire week just I was a mess I had just migraines constantly because I was just crying non-stop um and then there was um the scene where Khan shows something trust shows Ray something he's been working on for a while oh yeah uh, yeah so there's that, that one scene. got me um then oh the scene where um 
Oh, actually, the, the the one where the Vayas, Vayas, um, her last scene as well, where she finds a certain something, mm-hmm. and yeah, yep, yep. Um, that as well. So that uh, that combination of coming towards that end, um, mm-hmm. and which is very, I guess, it gives you a, a strong sense of what I'm dealing with in the next book. Those last two chapters specifically, and and prologue. So if you pull those together, then we see kind of how where things are shaping towards mm-hmm. the book two. So I have been crying. A lot with book two. <laughs> it was healthy. It's healthy to cry. It's good. I think it's good for you. I think. I, well, migraines <sighs> aren't, but <laughs> emotions are good. I cry. I cry all the time when when I'm reading or watching mm. something. My default is crying, whether it's sad, whether it's exciting. Yeah. I just it just starts yeah. coming. I'm like, I can't. This is yeah. so awesome. This is crazy. Yeah, and it, and it's not always sadness, you know. Like it's definitely I cry when it's something really happy that I've been like, if it's a moment I've been waiting for, like I wrote mm-hmm. a scene recently, and it's a moment that I've been building up to for so long, mm-hmm. and oh, I just want to cry thinking about it. It was, it's it was so. Yeah. Uh, I just I loved writing it, but I was and just a mess. And then there's also another scene which is probably the hardest scene I've ever written um in book two and that just absolutely sorted me i couldn't i couldn't write for like two days after i'm nervous so So, buckle up there's Mm -hmm. there's lots coming yeah i i uh you made me cry a couple times for sure i was i was certain things were revealed about certain characters at certain points in this book and that scene i was like whoa i've been waiting for this this is this is crazy Oh my gosh. It's 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 kind of it's it's kind of relieving in a way to know yeah. that you know not all authors are writing things and then just cackling me like ah oh, the readers are going to no. sob. <laughs> no. Like, no, it, it, it hits you too. I'm That's, myself okay. against the wall I'm here. Less, <laughs> I'm less angry, I'm less spiteful about the times I've cried in books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually when there's tears the tears that you know those tears were built into it. So yeah. yeah. That's good. That make that's that's good. Wow. Okay. Well, to to get to go to a more like inspiring like i don't know if this goes to your childhood you'll, you'll talk to me about it but what made you want to become an author specifically a creator of stories i okay so i've always i've always liked to read right like, mm-hmm. since 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 i was young i've been i've loved to just disappear i guess yeah and you know i've always loved to write as well i've, I've mum pulled out a whole bunch of stories that i wrote her when i was like eight nine ten and and it's funny oh, yeah, i still write the same way and i've still i left her on so many cliffhangers and mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was always like you know, these quirky stories um but it wasn't until i actually picked up a fantasy romance mm-hmm. and I was like, huh, like something clicked in me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, I because I'm, I'm a creative in every way possible. Like yeah. I need it to survive. Like mm-hmm. I can't get through the day without doing something that fuels my creativity. So like I, I draw, I paint, I, you know, I craft, I, I like everything you can possibly think of, I get my hands in. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is writing stories and actually when after i read my first fantasy romance series um which was actually thrown glass series by um sarah j mass you know, actually, I was, well i read twilight first so hang on a minute but that, okay, that, well, <laughs> everybody read twilight i have not read twilight yeah. yet i'm saving it i'm saving it i will one day i promise <laughs> uh, but no i was like hmm i I feel like something just clicked for me. And when I was like the first book that I ever wrote, um, fan, a fantasy romance, like it's, it would never see the light of day. It's like 400,000 words and it's still sitting on my computer. Um, I think every now and again, I pluck an idea from it, you know, and, awesome. and, and use it for other things that I'm working on. Um, but so it's a bit of a carcass at this stage. Um, <laughs> but but I, I think it kind of, something just clicked for me. And when I did start writing, it's, it's like nothing else has ever fulfilled that, that hunger within me that creative hunger to the point where i i'm not even looking around and wanting to paint i'm not wanting to i'm not i'm not desire i don't i don't want to sew i don't want to do anything else like i jump i'm so happy just sitting here and writing and i think that's when i realized it was right um that this was this is where i was meant to be yeah great answer yeah i i writing is it's just i feel like now I, I might be biased because I'm a reader and I enjoy writing, but it, it seems like one of the most fulfilling creative things just because you can do so much with it. Like you oh, can yeah. make people feel things, you can make people see things, like you can do so much with just words. And you think yeah. about it, like all these books, they're just a bunch of words 
arranged yeah. in a certain way and some of them yep. made me sob for like days it's like it's it's impressive it's it's really yeah. really cool and it's boundless <laughs> yeah and, fa and fantasy romance is it's good I, i'm a big romance fan I, there's a lot of books that i've read in my life where i was like i'm reading this book because of the romance like the main story yeah. is good but i want to know what happens with the romance <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i will say <laughs> with like... moon hatched it's like you've done this thing where the romance mm. is fascinating but mm. the world is also so unique and interesting that it's just kind of like for me it was like i every there's like reveals about both things that i want to know and it's like it's yeah. just such it was so it, it's so well done you, you wrote a good book Thank good you. book good job i can't wait for you to get book two I'm i can't so wait excited. to get book two you, you can always send it <laughs> <laughs> so the rough fish draft at the moment <laughs> there, there's um so you told me that book one and mm. book two were originally book one. Oh yes so that gives me makes me more curious about this question was when the moon hatch always supposed to be a series or did you want it to be one book i thought it was gonna be two two a duology. so okay. yeah yeah so um obviously now it's a trilogy mm -hmm. unless book three blows out and i'm like mm. <laughs> i've got to split this too but hopefully not i've actually the funny thing is when i before i sat down to write book two um i was like okay i need to make sure that this mistake's not going to happen with you know book three mm -hmm. like i need to make sure that i'm 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 getting to a certain point in the plot where I've only got one more book's yeah. worth of story here for this, you know, for this, this story arc. So um, I, I shuffled a few things around and I brought a few, few things forward. And um, yeah, so I, I should be able to finish it in three books. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Three is my favorite number. <laughs> three is perfect, in well, my opinion. I think it's cool too because there's like three different dragon swords, you know, mm -hmm. there's three different like territories. Mm -hmm. And I think that the sort of the visual, you know, side of things, like for special editions and stuff, you know, there's, there's, you, there, you know, you can have the three different dragons and yes. the three, you know, it's, I feel like it, it just works. The, so. the special editions are funny because I, I would see like posts and, mm. and stuff online for, for the sprayed edges and all these things. And so in my yeah. head, I was like, oh, it's a, it's a nice little little novel because it's like the angle of the sprayed edges is always like whatever. And then I went to the store and I picked it up and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a book. That's a tome. Yeah. <laughs> like, She's a brick. <laughs> like that is that's crazy and exciting. I'm, yeah. I love long stories, long mm -hmm. series. And, you know, your book is 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 big enough that it's like it's going to be three books, but it's three fairly long books. So yes. it's still there's yeah. still a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah 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 i'm um, the funny thing is i'm surprised i've fit so much into book two already because i think more happens like a lot more probably like a heck ton more happens in book two than happened in book one. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome uh, i'm like i'm surprised that it's uh, at the moment i'm looking i'm like i thought it was going to be like this plus half but at the moment depending on yeah you know, i've still got to go through and flesh it but it's yeah it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how big it actually turns out to be <laughs> i'm bummed <laughs> Um, I can't imagine a book being much thicker than that, though. So I'm like, yeah, I think any, <laughs> that's I'm like, fair. Be interesting. It would be impressive. Yeah. It would be, it'd be yeah. cool. Um, yeah. So I know you're working on book two right now, mm -hmm. and every writer has their own process. And so I'm, I'm curious to hear about your process. And yeah. I wanted to know how it differs uh, when you know you're writing a multi-book series. And you kind of went into that because um, my brain just turned off. <laughs> No, you're my right. brain told me just turned off. Well, you know, that's my question. My question is your writing process. Hit me with your writing yeah. process. So, okay. So, um, first of all, I, I, you know, map out the entire story in my head. Okay. So I will, I will, before I put anything down, I'm going start of the story like this is after i've done all my you know my lore and everything yeah. and i've got all that figured out i'm i'm i know how the world works um i know the backstories of these main characters that i'm kind of you know working with um but then i will sit down and i will in my head go through the entire story arc that i will follow trace the rabbit through uh, through a story knowing where i need to get to at the end mm -hmm. like i know where the story is going to end but i will chase that rabbit all the way to the end and so I've, I've seen the movie, uh, the movie, the book in my, in my head, you know, numerous times. And I'll run through that a few times before I even sit down. And then I will, I, I jot down my dialogue and my cues, almost like I'm writing a 
a TV show. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it'll be like stage yeah. cues. And so I I will have like a 40,000 word document then of just dialogue and screen and, and, and cues. Mm-hmm. And then I, I go through and I start writing each of those chapters and things will change. They always yeah. do. Once you actually get in there and you, you know, start fleshing things out, things change. So then once I get, and, that, and to be fair, sometimes I might get a third of the way through and I'll be like, ah, oh, there's something I need to change. So I'll go back to the start and then I will fiddle and then, you know, and then they might have changed something else and then I'll go back and whatnot. That happened with book two. Um, but then, and then I, you know, get to all the way to the end. Once I get all the way to the end, mm-hmm. then I'm like, all right, now let's go through from the start again. And usually I've had an alpha reader go through at this, you know, at that very rough draft as well. And so I'm then, I guess, equipped with uh, with what I need to go through and flesh it out and actually really make these chapters sing. And that is my favorite part because as a writer, you, you know, I'm sure you'd know this. It's it's you, you as you're writing, you're like, oh, I feel like this isn't coming out as cool as it is in my head, mm-hmm. you know, and like, and you're just like, oh man, I suck. Damn it, why can't I be better? Yeah. <laughs> but then you go back and you read the story, and quite often you're like so pleasantly surprised. It's like, oh. I know oh. that feeling of that that surprise. Yeah. Like I I've, yeah. I've written things and gone back and been like, wow, this sucks. But there's one thing yeah. I wrote kind of recently that I, I haven't looked at in a while, and I, re- I recently came back to it and looked at it. And I was like, oh, wow, this is actually decent. Like, I didn't yeah. do horrible. <laughs> it's really <Yeah>. cool. <clears throat> and honestly, I think that is why I, I always, you know, apart from quickly the, the next morning, I'll drop quickly burst over the chapter yeah. that I wrote the previous day just to make sure that it's tidy. And, um, you know, I don't do any fleshing. I just I just make sure that I haven't left in a whole bunch of spelling mistakes there and stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, and then, but then I move on. You know, I just, I don't allow myself to fiddle with it. Um, because when you go back to the start and you read it through, you know, you're you're seeing it as a reader and, you know, then you get to really see it with those fresh eyes. You, you see different problems that you have with it. You see what's working, what, you know, it will, you kind of, it gives you that chance to, I guess, take a real big step back and then look at it mm-hmm. with fresh eyes. Um, whereas if like the chapters that have always been a pain to me are ones that I have gone over and over and over and over again without moving forward with the story. Yeah. And honestly, you just end up chewing the fat and you just end up overriding things. And when you're overriding things, other people are feeling that when they're reading it. So yeah. I just get it down, move on. And then, so after I've gone through and fleshed things, I pass it on to my beta readers. I'll do a read through myself again, pass mm-hmm. it on to my beta readers. They'll go through and that's usually like more surface level stuff that they'll comment on. Uh, there might be some bigger things too, which then I assess those and I'll do any rewrites based on what I what I agree with and, you know, and I'll relook at things and whatnot. Yeah. And usually when there's a bad comment, you know, or there's something that somebody's got a problem with, there's an issue there. Um, but so it's always about finding the root of that issue and quite yeah. often it's not actually there. It might be because I failed to do something properly earlier. Um, so I go through, I listen to all that. I redo anything I need to redo. And then I pass it on to my editors. They do their things. Mm-hmm. I tidy up that. Then I do another couple of read-throughs myself. Then I format it, and then I read it formatted as a book because it always reads differently. <laughs> that must be a big part of the process with a book that big. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, formatting it took a month because I was putting all those pictures in, and yeah, you know, yeah. like I wanted the experience to be, you know, to feel like stepping into another world, and you mm-hmm. know, I wanted it all to just, I wanted it to be perfect. So I, yeah, I spent a lot of time formatting that story <laughs> and and yeah and then that's that really then then publish so then I'm, I'm assuming because you like made a conscious effort to make sure you would have a story to tell for book three you got ideas yeah. for book three already even though you're working oh on it's, all it's, it's, all it's all ma- mapped it's all ma- oh, it's all it's all yeah, that's the awesome. Whole thing. <laughs> that's <was> awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, obviously things change, but you mm-hmm. know, especially after you finish writing book one, it's like, oh, I need to do a bit more of that in book two and yeah. three, you know, and stuff like that. But no, yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself with book three. So <laughs> there's um, <laughs> this is this is public information, but a lot of people asked it, so I wanted to ask it to you just to give you the chance to tell everybody. Uh, yeah. When's book two coming out? October next year. So yeah. So I so long, will hopefully but... be done with it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's so I'll be I'll be done with the first draft and you know, hopefully twenty two days if I stick to that. Mm-hmm. Um 
and then I will we, um, I've got something actually exciting happening uh, which I can't talk about right now um, but then after that happens um, I will go through it again and okay. uh, pass my US editor and my UK editors um, for um, Avon and Harper Voyager and then they do and then I'll go through I'll flesh things out and stuff and then you know things are a bit different now because um, it's trad so it, it's sort of it, the process is a bit different compared to an indie process so um, it does mean unfortunately it does stretch out a bit uh, but it'll probably be ready for publish by mm -hmm. April uh, so there'll be some early arcs going out around about then but um, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah all right all right well I, I, I would I would complain but I know that it means you get time to make the story good and feel yeah. good about it you're not rushed so I'm not going to complain because it's going to be a great book <laughs> and I, I can wait I can be patient I'll do my best <laughs> hypothetically don't know how much you're willing to say but do you plan on breaking our hearts at the end of the series or do you think you'd like to leave it on a more satisfying note that won't devastate everybody so i mean there will be heartbreak along the way you know I'm, I, I i there will be there will be hurt but i can say that you can trust me with your hearts <laughs> I, I i i love a happy happy ending as as much as a lot of people you know so uh that's good it will be hurt but i will i will i will also I, i'll look after you i promise <laughs> fantastic okay good i'm even more excited now I always get so nervous with series when I start yeah, series too. and I love yeah. this series and I'm like, oh, but is the, I used to, now this is a horrible thing to admit, but I used to like spoil myself because I was like, I don't know, I don't want to yeah. start this series if it's going to make me cry. It's no, like, uh... I, I, I don't usually read the end of books. Like, mm -hmm. I, I really, I, 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 I you know, try my best not to because mm -hmm. I'm, I, 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 I like to go on the journey, but yeah. there was one particular series that I, I was like, oh, I've got a feeling something bad's going to happen here. And so I flipped to the end and I was like, hang on a minute, where's their POV? <laughs> and I was so heartbroken that I just stopped reading. I was like, yeah. no, yeah. no. No, you can't believe you did I'm this. I'm still heartbroken. Oh my How gosh. can you do this to me? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> All right, we're on the same page. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. All right, now. Can you give us an out of context spoiler for book two? I can. Yes, I can. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. Let me see what I've got here. Hang on. Now I'm just going to think about the context for months and just be like, oh, what is <laughs> going on? <laughs> oh, golly. I wonder if this is out of context enough, actually. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> How many truths sit like stones in my den? waiting to be found. You are the brightest of them all, perhaps the reason she has been so cautious of it. In her life, the brightest lights blink out. His face twists painfully, his hands balling into fists so tight his knuckles turn white. His next words strained. Who hurt her? Too many. Those stories are not mine to share, Khan Vega. I think it's safe to say you could just publish the book now. Actually, <laughs> I think I think it's ready. Personally, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, my heart. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. That'll that tide course. me over for a couple months. Um, that's the first teaser I've given, actually. So cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Calm down. So, this I think probably everybody who creates a story has thought about this but yeah do you want your story to be brought to the big screen movie tv show animation like how would you feel about that i think if it was done in the way that i picture in my head then that would be fantastic it would be incredible you know but it would need to be gritty you know yeah. um and yeah. i think if it couldn't be done i guess you know with the right um what's you know you know you know how in in um house of the dragon there's there's like you know the dragons look so real yeah and you know, it's like you feel like you're there mm -hmm. um like if it couldn't be done to that you know realness yeah. then um I, I have you seen arcane oh <laughs> i have i yeah. have yeah yeah okay there, and something like that that would be that would be a dream come true for me. Mm, <laughs> that would be yeah. that would be so awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. So this this uh, uh, you may have noticed, I have a cardboard cutout of Henry Cavill. I can see me. that. <laughs> so there's uh, 
I'm a big fan of him, and it just became when I was creating content, it became a funny thing. And on on Book Talk and Bookstagram, so many people are like, "Oh, he could be everybody." And I've seen so oh, many got, memes oh, of just him photoshops like as Reese, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> just so many, right? And so, yeah. my question for you is: mm -hmm. In said big budget adaptation of When the Moon Hatched, mm. is there a place for Henry Cavill? Oh, I think there's always a place for Henry Cavill, isn't there? If, if, if not, if not himself, then his voice. Come yes. on. <laughs> yes. But yeah, there's there, there's always there's always a place. There's always a place. It's the best answers. You're so good at this. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, in in a similar vein, like in in that hypothetical, do you have anybody in mind that would be good casting for Rave or Khan that you just like already or? <laughs> Oh, so I, these characters live in my head, right? So I, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I leave the fan casting to fans, you know. I, Fair. I, I think, I think everyone, when everyone's reading a story, they see, they see, you know, I was about to say folk. I've, I've obviously been in this, in this. World. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm living in this world right now. Mm -hmm. Um, they see, you know, these folk differently. Like everyone's, everyone's got their own, you know. Um, so I, there's, but there is one female character who kind of really has the look that I picked from Rave. She's in, um, what's the movie called? Purple Heart. Okay. Um, it was on, yeah, it was on Netflix, came out kind of like a year ago. She's, I don't know her name, but she's really got kind of a Rave look about her. Oh, and have you seen, have you seen the Batman movie? Not yet. It's on my. It's on my. It's on my TV. Watched. <laughs> That's a good movie. First of all. Yeah. Second of all, Robert Pattinson's amazing. Also. Uh. Okay. I. I was gonna ask because I think Zoe Kravitz. I think she plays Catwoman in that, and I thought that's who you're talking about, but it was a small photo, and it's someone else. Uh. So I'm wrong. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but anyways, great movie. I'll, I'll just advertise that to you. Um, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense because I think yeah. I think that can probably skew how you write too if you're if you're picturing yeah. it as someone specifically, and then if yeah. it does go big and you get a, to adapt it and it doesn't end up being that character, you're gonna be bummed, right? Or that actor. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Want to keep the story as like pure as possible. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Cool. Cool. Then, cool question. So you have another series. Uh, I have not yeah. read it yet. I would like to, and I will, but. Do you have any plans of things to write after the Moonfall series? Like, w w do you want to go? Would would you want to go back into that world or go in a completely different direction? Or is that just too far well, in the future? I, I honestly, I, I could I could live in this world forever, but I, I definitely do have other stories that I that I that I do want to tell. But in saying that, there is so much lore and there is so much history in this world that mm. there are so many other stories that I could tell in it so we'll just have to wait and see i'll get to the end and then you know if i'm you know if i'm being pulled towards another part another time and that in, in the world and you know another story and yeah. other characters then i will i'll tell their story so we'll just have to wait and see okay i will wait and i will see <laughs> um so two more, i got two more questions for you one was a very specific one it was funny somebody asked specifically if you were going to do any book signings in melbourne yes you are actually Yes, next year, uh, around about October, I think. So actually, it's around about the time when I release. So, but um, it's it's the rare R A R E um, readers and oh, I don't know what that abbreviates. So readers and I'm not sure, but rare rare yeah. Melbourne. Okay, <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, so yeah, I, I love um, that you have an answer for yeah. that. That's, that's that's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, then beyond that, just in the coming months up to that point, like, do you have any events or things that are public that you are wanting people to show up at? or is it like all kind of still early so keep an eye on my instagram early next week okay. um for anybody who's in the uk canada and the us um there might be some cool stuff uh okay. to uh maybe secure tickets to and to okay. uh <laughs> everybody pay attention but keep your eyes open on instagram <laughs> i've got a i've got a uh, 27 day uh i guess gap to get to the end of this book before this certain thing happens so there's some exciting okay. stuff coming cool okay final question and it's 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 not like a deep conversation question unfortunately but you know i want to create this into video short form videos i want to like make this into content as well beyond the stream so is there anything you want to promote like anywhere i can send people um 
I would definitely say that it's like my website. Um, if so, it's, it's on my it's on my Instagram. There's the link there. Um, it's underneath my bio. Um, so that will have information of this thing that I can't talk about right now. Okay. <laughs> um, but also, I am eventually going to be opening up the merch store on there as well. And on that merch store, uh, if you liked the internal headers on uh, in Moon, then there's some really cool things that are coming out on there that Alice has been working on for me and I'm um, really excited so yes I love when art authors like give you merchandise and stuff to get yeah. beyond the book because I am a, yeah. I'm a collector <laughs> I waste yeah, money I, uh, that's just <laughs> how I am as a person <laughs> Uh, so very I went exciting. through a plant phase in 2020 and I just like, I brought, I had like 120 plants just like packed into the lounge room. So yeah, I'm, I'm a collector too. I get it. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, there's some cool things. All right. Well, that has been my questions. Uh, I, I could talk to you forever. You're a great conversationalist. Thank um, you. you know, all, so, yeah, it's been fun. It's been great. Um, you yeah. know, keep me in mind for potential arcs. You know, no, pro yeah. I don't need. A, I don't need a promise. No just like keep I've me. Got, in mind. I've got you sorted. Okay. I've okay. got you cool. sorted. No, perfect, fantastic. <laughs> it's been great. It's been awesome. It's so been so great to meet you. And so wonderful to chat. Thank you so much for having me. It's just sure. been an absolute honor. And yeah, you get to so be fun. my first, my first interview. Yeah. Like in, in, in a year, you're I'm gonna have it. your second book, and I'm gonna be like yeah. hyper famous, and it's gonna, and, yeah. and we'll come back for book two. We'll come back, and, we'll, and, and you will have like, written your book too, because yeah. that's you know, because you're gonna keep back to <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great. I'm gonna wrap it up. And yeah, thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Say yeah. You guys hear I'm sorted for the arc. Did you guys hear that? Y'all hear that? That's crazy. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? She had a secret lab chair. I just have a game of, and I have a Game of Thrones one. I should have mentioned that because she was talking about Game of Thrones. It could have been so much more relatable.